Hi everybody, it's Joe Kirk from FinSuite. In this video, we go over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the live example going over the tabs component. In this video, we learn how to build a truly dynamic Webflow CMS generated tabs component. We are going to generate a new tab link and tab pane for every item inside our CMS collection list. Here we're on a published site and we have 10 projects. These buttons and the content inside of the panes is being generated by a CMS dynamic list. If we go into designer, we see this same exact tabs component with just three tabs and only sample content. This will be completely ignored on the published site. And instead we get our information and our feed from our data feed. Let's go through all the steps here to make sure we understand how this works. It's very important you understand what's going on here and how this is working. And if you don't, it will be very difficult to implement. Please take the time to understand what's going on and then it will be very easy to go and implement this on your site. First, we need to know that this is a native Webflow tabs component. Here inside the assets, the elements panel, down in the components section, we have our tabs element. This is native to Webflow. We have all the settings that we can go and play with. Next, we have our data feed. This is very important. This is a big, big part of this, that the content in this tabs component is completely generated by what's in this list below. Here you see we have 10 projects in our data feed and those 10 projects are generating 10 tabs and 10 panes all with its own unique CMS content inside. So we have our data feed and on that published site, each item inside this list is going to create a unique link and a unique pane that will be automatically connected to one another. So if you have 10 projects, 50 projects, 100 projects, you can show all of them inside this tabs component. It's very important to understand how the information is transferred from the data feed to the tabs component. Here, if I click into the first child, the only child of our dynamic tabs item, we have a class called tabs. This is copy to tab. And we made this naming very simple and very obvious to say, this is what's copied to the tab. Not the dynamic item, not the dynamic list, not the dynamic wrapper. We are essentially ignoring the CMS structure here and we are only going to take this very first and only child inside the dynamic item. So this tabs gets copied inside the pane, just like this. And if I were to go and remove this structure, let's see how this looks. So I'll go and just unlink all of this. Let me unlink and I will unlink and unlink. Now we can go drag this out. We'll remove this structure. And this is essentially what we're doing here. We're taking out that structure. We're putting in this static tabs is copy to tab, but we're, we'll maintain all of that dynamic info so that when you do go and switch the content, you see the correct information. So this is what's happening. obviously with the correct content. Great. So we need to understand that. Please make sure you understand this is the element that's going into that tab pane. The next thing we need to know is that we need to define what the tab link is called. So we have, if we have 10 items, we know to link project one to project one, project two to project two, project three to project three. We need to know what this button is called. What's that text inside of the button? It's perfectly project one, two, three, four, and five here. We have to set a class in here. This is called tab name, and that is going to be the official name of the link of that tab content. So 
Now let's go and go through these classes and make sure we understand all three. We'll hit on tab name at the end. The first class that we have to understand is on the outermost tabs component. Here we have our tabs component, we have our tabs menu, tabs content, this is native when you put this component on the page. We've given the tabs a class of tabs component. In our JavaScript, we'll be using this class to make sure we tell the library which tabs component we'll be generating the content on. Next, we need a class on our data feed and we need it on the collection item, the collection element of the list. So we have our collection list wrapper, we have our collection list, and we have our collection item. We don't care about the item, we don't care about the wrapper. We care about the list. So we're on this middle element here, and we have a class of tabs data feed. And that's going to tell the library, this is the entire feed of information that we need here. We need for every item in here, go ahead and do the new pane, do the new text, and get this tab to be copied. And the last class that we need, which will be inside of each item, is the tab name. And this is saying this is our name inside of that link. If we were to go and change that to, let's say, the services, let's go and do this as tab name, Let's also do a test while we're doing this to not only do 10 items, but let's do 30 items. We will now see that the name of this tab, as well as the amount of these tabs, will be updated. Okay, we're published, and when we go back to the live example and give a reload, we are going to see 30 tabs we're also going to see those tabs being named as the service item. And if I go down, that is exactly what we are seeing. We have 30 tabs, we have our component, and we also have some issues here. We're going over this for a specific reason. These are being grouped. We're not only giving this name to the visible text, but we're giving it as an indicator, an ID, of each tab. So you'll see that when I click strategy consulting, it's going to select all of the strategy consulting and list all of them inside the tabs component. It's a bit weird and it's not really what we want to do, but I wanted to show you this showing that we can have these different names very easily and that they need to be unique. And you can see when I'm clicking on these, it's not changing. So please, when you go and create your tab name, please make sure to have them unique. So I'll go ahead and remove this from tab name. I'll go now and put tab name back on here. And now if we were to go and publish the page, we're going to see these 30 tabs all with unique tab names and this will work flawlessly. And we're published, let's go and now check this out. We will now have these same 30 tabs, but with unique names. These unique names are working as expected. And there we go, project one, project one. We'll go project 13, project 13. And here we have truly dynamic Webflow CMS generated tabs. Now let's go into custom code. Let's see how these three classes work together in the JavaScript to make this live on the published site. We're in the custom code and we will go through this line by line. What you're looking at is the full extent of the code you need here. And on a very quick glance, you can see all of the important classes that we've set up. We have our tabs data feed, we have our tabs component, and we have our tab name. The very first thing we have to do is make sure we have our hosted library script on the page. This is hosted for free in our CDN for you. Next, we have our script, which is specific to the site, specific to the example, and to this tab setup. First, we will create a new function. And in that function, we will set a variable called fstabs. fstabs is going to hold all of this information. This is our new instance of the FN Suite CMS library. That new instance is going to be targeted to 
the tabs data feed. This is the official list of information that we want to populate our tabs component. And all of this is sitting inside our FS tabs. Then we'll take our FS tabs variable and we'll run our tabs component on it in the library. We have to define our tab component option, which is the class that we give to the tabs component in Webflow. In our example, we are calling this the tabs component. This is saying CMS library, we are going to put our tabs data feed inside of this tabs component. And then we have to define the tab name. And the tab name is what visually shows inside that tab link. It also defines it as an ID for that tab link. And we are calling that our tab name. Next, we are setting reset IX to true, which is going to allow you to add Webflow interactions to this element and have them work correctly. That's all you need to know to set up a truly dynamic tabs component inside Webflow. That's effing sweet.